Hey guys, I'm back with another video and I just wanna first say thank you guys so much for all the love. I was not expecting all that. And for those of you guys who are going through the same thing or a very similar situation to me, I feel you. It makes you feel comforted that there, that there are other people who understand what you're going through as well and who experience the same thing. Not that you want people to experience the same thing, but just knowing that you're not alone is super comforting. A lot of times when you're going through these experiences, you're kind of the only one that you know going through it. I mean, I really felt heard. So thank you so much for that. This is a video that I wanted to kind of make for a while because I just see so many people getting into family vlogging and I just want to let y'all know <laughs> my experience i don't think family vlogging is the cause of any of my situation just let me get that straight and clear but i do think i gaslit myself a little bit through my family vlogs just because the final product was always like the best moments of our day and so seeing the best moments of our day was kind of just like oh we are great and I'm, like, nothing's wrong like our problems are aren't that bad just small things like that that you might not think about these are some things that have popped into my mind and i always see like new families or like you know a lot of tiktokers who come to youtube and they're like oh i'm starting a family vlog now and i'm i'm pregnant and yada 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 and i'm like oh be careful girl oh be careful so here are some things that i would like to share to anybody who maybe is thinking about starting a family vlog or who is currently a family vlogger and is maybe new at it and if you're asking who the hell are you to give me any advice about family vlogging hi i'm whitney and this is my channel dear natural 85 and this channel currently does not have any family vlog videos on it but i used to have a uh family vlog on this channel and i had it for over six years, oh God, I don't even know. It was before my child was born up until she, I think we stopped vlogging when she was six. I have a lot of experience family vlogging and I did it daily. And so um, it was back in the day when family vlogging was not like it is today. If you know a family vlogger, just send this to them basically, okay? So my first thing is about the kids. So think really hard about what you wanna share about their lives. So I think we started family vlogging when I was in my like, mid 20s we didn't really know too much about the internet at the time and so we we're just kind of like oh this is cool space and like we can share our lives and so we just kind of like weren't really putting a lot of thought into what we were doing these days i put a lot of thought into like how much of my kids i share they are old enough to tell me they want to be on my pages or they want to be shown or they want me to share this or they don't want me to share that and so i would just be very careful about showing too much of your kids before they can tell you if that's okay. So like consent, because again, it is their identity. Luckily for me, it's fine. Like my kids actually want me to put them on YouTube and they want me to share more of their lives, but God forbid it was the opposite, then I would have felt really bad. A lot of times we feel like, oh, this is my baby, like my child. So I make the decisions, but it's really like their life. You know, they are their own human being. And so I shared everything, including their birth, yada, yada, yada. And so it was a lot. I don't regret because at the time that was just kind of like what people did. We just shared everything. Like we were just sharing and it was just a fun, harmonious, hippie time. It was like Woodstock on YouTube and we were just all sharing our lives. And so these days it is a little bit, it's different, you know? And again, it's their identity. So just think about that. This is coming from somebody who did share their child as a baby as soon as they came out. <laughs> So I'm not saying that I was perfect in that. I'm just saying that these are like lessons that I learned. Just consider it. There's always ways that you can show your child without actually showing their face or whatever, you know? So think about that until they're old enough, of course, to let you know if that's okay. My second tip is to be careful about sharing all the many reasons why you love someone, okay? When you're in love, you wanna shout it off the rooftops right like that's the thing it's like there, there are movies made out of this you want to share with everybody who has ears that you love this person and why just be very careful because not everybody online is a friend i always make the mistake of thinking or i did not not anymore <laughs> but i made the mistake of thinking everybody online is a friend right like i'm happy they're happy I love, they love. I wanna see the best for everybody. So do they, they wanna see the best for me. Nope, we all have our own brains and they're all wired differently. Don't come on here thinking that everyone's gonna be happy for you and your love and that they wanna see you succeed in life. That's just not the reality. So don't be naive like me. And just know that if you are shouting to the rooftops why you love this person, you are in a way advertising them to people who don't give a damn about you. <laughs> so just be very careful. You don't wanna put your significant other out there like it's an ad 
to tempt people who are, don't have your best interest in mind to come and get them. My third tip is just to keep some things to yourself. I kind of mentioned this earlier, but you know, not everything needs to be shared. And I understand like when you're in the mind frame of daily vlogging, especially like where everything, literally every day is content. It's like, ooh, I woke up and there's content here. This kind of like, this is like that TikTok song. Everything is content and everything is content and every, like not everything is content. Okay. There are some things that only you deserve to experience and to see and to know about. For example, one thing for me, like I remember I put all of my like birth and all that. I mean, I didn't show my private areas, but like pretty much the birthing process and all that kind of stuff. And that is one thing that I do wish that I kind of maybe cut the, the film when I was about to give birth and maybe just showed the after of me in my bed. Like you didn't need to see me lying in bed with my new baby and like the tears and the emotions of it all like that was very sacred and that's something that I kind of do wish that I didn't share and that should have been just for me um and for my family and something that I could like view personally and so that's one thing that I'm like ooh, maybe too much <laughs> maybe I gave away a little bit of the sacredness just a little bit so there's some things that honestly it's just about the energy that surrounds it that you only deserve that energy so just if it's private stuff and it's not even about like it's because it's dangerous to share it or anything like that it's literally just about the energy that surrounds it like you don't want to give away all of yourself right keep some stuff for yourself to enjoy that's that's special to you that's that that only you deserve because you are that person and that is your experience do you know what i'm saying i think i already mentioned this one but i might as well just say this don't think that everybody is your friend online most people who are watching you are watching you because they care about you and they like you and they want to see your experience in your life but just know that there's a lot of people who are just watching with their popcorn and waiting for you to mess up okay and so like just know who who might be behind the screen watching you. Okay, so this one is really um, an interesting one that you might not think about unless you were actually a family vlogger or a daily vlogger. When you make your family or your relationship your business, special moments or like gifts or any type of surprises or any like special, anything special, you're always going to be questioning whether that was done because of the relationship. Like that was just something that was always gonna happen in the relationship and we just happened to catch it. Or if that was content, right? Like, would you have done that if I wasn't filming? Would we have done that if we weren't filming, right? Just keep that in mind that when you do start filming your life and make it your business, moments that are supposed to be special, that are filmed, you might look back on them and it might muddy the experience a little bit because you might not know if that was an actual experience that you would have had if you weren't filming, right? And so I've actually seen this with a few other couples that have broken up. And again, we didn't break up because of vlogging. I just wanna put that out there. But for some other couples that have broken up that were also vlogging, and I don't think they broke up because of vlogging, the prank couple, boyfriend versus girlfriend, I forget what their name is. I remember when they first broke up and that was something that they had mentioned as well, like they just didn't know, you know, how real their experiences are and that's completely 100% I concur. When you really make your life and your relationship, your business for content, like is it content or was this my life? Like do you, like just think about that. Maybe you wanna think about how you're gonna put up boundaries so that you know that at a certain point, business ends and life begins, right? Because when you mix the two, it's very, very muddy. It causes you to not trust as much in the strength of the relationship or the meaning or the reasoning behind the relationship. Or like, would you have left if we weren't doing this? Would you have let that slide? Would you have done more? Would you have done less? You know, all of these questions come up. It really makes things very confusing. So just think about that. You'll always be questioning whether things are real or not. My next advice is that money and fame will make your spouse more of who they already are. So if there are things about them that you do like or that you don't like, money and fame will strengthen those traits. Just make sure that you're okay dealing with that, okay? So if there are things that you currently are side-eyeing about the person that you plan to, to daily vlog with, when they get more money and more attention and more opportunities, they will become more of that, <laughs> okay? It's not gonna go away, it's going to enhance. So whether it's good or it's bad, keep that in mind. Okay, moving on. When you tie up your livelihood with your intimate partner, it's going to make that relationship 
or leaving that relationship a lot more complex in two ways. When you leave, you're going to be thinking about the fact that you are not only sad about the personal relationship, if you are, you're also going to be considering, do I want to leave and possibly mess up my source of income? Because this is how we get our income. Again, that wasn't the case of mine. And then three, if you do decide to leave, now we have to go through the process of breaking everything apart. And that's going to be messy, 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 messy. So um, if you are getting into family vlogging or vlogging with a, a spouse or a partner, why don't you go ahead and like put together a contract of how things are going to be split up before you even start? Like, should something happen, this is what's going to happen. Like, it's like a prenup for your channel. I'm just saying it'll make things a lot easier for you. OK, and so I think that's pretty much it. I have some other ones here, but I think I kind of went over them already and I don't want to like drone this video out any longer. But I will say like one other thing that I noticed towards the end of when I was vlogging is that and maybe you guys noticed it as well, like my vlogging got a lot sloppier. I wasn't focused so much on like how the video looked and there was actually a reason for that because I noticed that I was really giving away all of my experiences. When you're viewing something through your own eyes, you're taking in that energy like through your soul, right? I know, sorry, this is, you're getting to know a little bit more about me today. <laughs> but I realized that as I was watching these videos back, I was like, wait a minute, I was watching that through my camera. Like I experienced this moment in my own life the exact same way that my subscribers experienced it. So did I even experience it? Do you know what I'm saying? Like if you're constantly looking at your life through the lens of a camera, are you really experiencing your life? Because it's a difference between looking through, looking at your child or, you know, a situation through a camera lens, you know, you're viewing it in your camera, trying to make sure everything is in frame, everything looks nice for your subscribers and yada, yada, yada. And you're like literally missing the moment behind the camera. You've missed the little tiny details, the flutter of the eye, the smile, the, you know, nervousness, the moment in 3D, right? You just miss, you completely missed that. You, you didn't get the energy of it. And you're really just ex experiencing your own life the exact same way that your subscribers are. So I kind of realized that and I was like, oh, hell no. Like, I cannot believe that like when my child first crawled, I picked up the camera and I was like watching it through my camera to make sure like, oh, it's so cute. Good job, Olivia. Good job. And I'm watching it through my camera. Uh, no, put that mofo down and look at your child crawling. Take that in through your eyeballs. Take it through your lens, not the camera lens, like your lens deserves that. Right. And so um, towards the end there, I started like if something happened and I was filming it, I would literally grab my camera, I would grab it and I would put it in like the vicinity of what was going on and I'd be watching. So I'd be like, oh my God, good job. Oh yeah, oh, that's so cool. Making sure that I, like my own lens, were experiencing this moment so I could see everything that was going on and take in that moment, take in the energy, not miss any of those little tiny small details that you remember that really uh, like hit your soul and your heart. And so like whatever is happening here on the camera, not my problem like that's that's for my channel you know for the subscribers and the community great but i'm gonna experience it because this is my life this is your real life if, if it is your real life you know i was filming my real life if this is your real life don't miss it by looking at it through a camera take it all in um, that's probably my biggest advice i mean i'm not going to tell you how to make your videos if you want to make things look perfect then great but when you do that when you are literally like looking at your life through a camera you're literally missing your life <laughs> you're literally missing your life in 3d like the experience of it the energy of it and every time i like see videos where people are like across the street from their child to get like this amazing shot of like whatever you're doing i cringe i'm like oh my god like you are so far away from your life you're filming your life like you're a director be in your life experience your life you know, that's my advice from somebody who was a former family vlogger, things that I have learned throughout my experience of doing this for over six years or forever how long I did it. Heed my advice. At least take it into consideration I'm not crazy, okay? I hope this video helps you guys. I'll be back with another video. Let me know what you want to see below. See you in the next video, guys. Love you. Bye.